So in the series of videos we have been discussing about photosynthesis, its light reactions. Now we are here to discuss about the light independent reactions of photosynthesis. First of all we see the light independent phase of photosynthesis is the biosynthetic phase of photosynthesis. That means something is getting synthesized here. These light independent reactions need energy and a reducing agent. And we get these from light reactions. From light reactions, we get ATP as well as a NADPH. ATP gives us the energy, and NADPH acts as a reducing agent in light independent reactions. The light independent reactions occur through a cycle of reactions, what we call as Kelvin cycle. And in this Kelvin cycle, the carbon dioxide is fixed first, and then it's reduced into carbohydrates like glucose. So sometimes these reactions are also called as carbon reactions and this Kelvin cycle occurs in stroma of the chloroplast. First of all, let's have a quick look of reactions from where we have started and where we are going. The reactants in the first stage of photosynthesis are the water molecule, ADP molecule, inorganic phosphate and the NADP plus molecule. This reaction occurs in chlorophyll pigment molecules. It's actually when the photons, when the light strikes the photosystem, they excite the electrons, then there's the electron transport chain and lot of reactions going on. And ultimately, we get the products like oxygen, ATP and NADPH. The oxygen being the byproduct of this reaction is not used further, so it's released. So ultimately, we get ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate and NADPH molecule. These are the light reactions. Then after the light reactions, the carbon dioxide molecule is fixed. And in this part, the ATP and NADPH produced during the light reactions are used here. The NADPH reduces the carbon dioxide molecule into triose phosphates, which ultimately transforms into carbohydrates. And the reactants ATP and NADPH are used here and we get ADP and NADP plus back again from where the reaction has started. So this is how the light reactions and the carbon reactions, what we call as light independent reactions, occur in the chloroplast. Now let's have a detailed look of Kelvin cycle reactions. The Kelvin cycle is divided into three phases. The first phase is the carboxylation phase, which is preceded by reduction phase, and finally we have the regeneration phase. In carboxylation phase, the carboxylation of RUBP occurs by carbon dioxide molecule. So we see in the carboxylation phase, the carbon fixation occurs by this RUBP molecule. And then there is a reduction of 3-phosphoglycerate to glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate. And this reduction is done by a reducing agent NADPH. And finally, we have the regeneration phase where the RUBP that's ribulose bisphosphate molecule is regenerated to continue the cycle. First of all, in the Kelvin cycle, we start the reaction from a molecule called ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate. It's a 5 carbon compound. The circles denote the carbon number here. And in this reaction, three molecules of RUBP takes part. Now, first of all, let's calculate the number of carbons because it's the important part. We have three molecules of RUBP and RUBP is a 5 carbon compound, which means total number of carbons are 15. 3 multiplied by 5. Then we see three carbon dioxide molecules react with ribulose bisphosphate. Three carbon dioxide means the cycle runs three times. Each time it fixes one carbon molecule. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called Rubisco. And from this reaction, we get the six molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate, which is a 3-carbon compound. And to keep a track of how many carbons we have now is 18, because six molecules multiplied by 3-carbon compound gives us 18 carbons, which is right, as the three molecules of ribulose 1,5 bisphosphate gives us total number of 15 carbons in it. After that, 3-phosphoglycerate gets converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and in this reaction 6 ATP molecules are used and this reaction is catalyzed by phosphoglycerate kinase. The compound formed here contains the same number of carbon atoms as there were in 3-phosphoglycerate that's 18 carbon. Now in this cycle 
the reduction phase begins. There is a reduction of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And this reduction is mediated by NADPH, that is the reducing agent in Calvin cycle. And we get the molecule that is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. It is a 3-carbon compound and we get 6 molecules of it. And number of carbon atoms remains the same, that is 18. And this reaction of reduction is catalyzed by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme. After that, one molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate forms triose phosphate, which later on synthesizes carbohydrate molecules after several turns of cycle. In triose phosphate, we have three carbons and we have one molecule of it. That means only three carbons are there. That's why they are called triose phosphate. So now the remaining five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate contains 15 carbon atoms and it is this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate which is used to regenerate the ribulose bis-5-phosphate to continue the cycle. After that the cycle will run again and will make another triose molecule thus combining with the previous triose phosphate molecule to give the 6 carbon molecule that's glucose. So this is how the Calvin cycle works in to synthesize a single glucose molecule the cycle runs six times I hope you like the video and if you think this is worth helping do subscribe the channel for more videos like that thanks